Hello once again, I'm Simon and I'm going to take you through will and axo. We shall define the term will and axo. We shall look at examples of will and axo. We shall classify will and axo. Will and axo are grouped into gear driven wheels and bell driven wheels. Uh, we shall see the importance of each and how they are applied, the gear driven wheels and the bell driven wheels. Then we shall also do some calculations on wheel and axle. So we are beginning with the definition. What do you understand by wheel and axle? Wheel and axle are two rotating wheels fixed together. They are two rotating wheels fixed together or they are two rotating levers. This is the illustration of wheel and axle. Uh, we have a bigger wheel and a smaller wheel and the bigger wheel is attached onto the smaller wheel which is like a rod that round road there. So the bigger wheel is fixed there onto the smaller wheel. The bigger wheel works as the effort arm and the smaller wheel, which is the axle, works as the load arm. So you have to put effort onto the bigger wheel so that you turn the axle and then the axle will do some work for you. It will work as the load. Mm -hmm. Examples of devices that use the wheel and axle mechanism we have got a windlass we have got an egg beater we have got a door knob the steering wheel of a car even some motorboats have got a steering wheel the handlebars of bicycles and motorcycles the pedals of a bicycle we also have the screwdriver i've tried to draw some pictures here the steering wheel is here the windlass, windlass is used for drawing water from down there. Mm -hmm. The handlebars of bicycles and motorcycle. This is, these are the bicycle pedals. We have got this one, it rotates in that. That is the bigger wheel. Then we have the smaller wheel there, which will be acting as the axle. Mm -hmm. Then we have got door knobs. We have the, you turn this when you're opening or you turn that there. Normally, these door knobs usually have a long effort, especially like this one, the door handle has got a long effort arm so that you can use less effort. Mm -hmm. So those are examples of the wheel and axle. The types of wheel and axle, we have two. We have gear wheels and belt driven wheels. Gear wheels and belt driven wheels. So we need to define what gear wheels are. Gear wheels are special wheels that have teeth around them. These are special wheels that have got teeth around them, or you could say they have cogs around them. In fact, some people call gear wheels cog wheels. Mm -hmm. Application of ge gears, how do gears work? Gears work in opposite direction. Now, these are the wheels, they have teeth around them. The teeth are of different kinds. Some of them you'll find the teeth are just that. Others you'll find the teeth are we have different kinds of teeth on the gears. Now look at this. So I'm saying gears work in opposite direction. When one is moving in, when one is moving anti-clockwise, the other will be, when the other, when one is moving clockwise, the other will be moving anti-clockwise. And for them to work, the teeth must be interlocked together. Mm -hmm. So gears work in opposite direction. I can see, draw in an exam i can set for your number and it say this is maybe this is a and this is b and i only put an arrow on b then i tell you complete the diagram by putting an arrow on a you should know that gears work in opposite directions then application of gears give examples of um, devices that use the gears we have got gear boxes of cars and motorcycles we have got clocks and watches we have got those toys for children, toy cars, toy trains, and so on and so forth. All those use the gears. Uh -huh. Then when we move to the belt driven wheels, belt driven wheels are special wheels that have belts that work around them. They have got belts that work around them. Mm -hmm. So one wheel is joined to another using a belt and motion is transmitted from one wheel to another. Usually one wheel is bigger than the other. The bigger wheel is working as the effort arm and the smaller wheel is working as the load arm mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they we do not have a belt around them sometimes we have a chain around them 
So those are called chain driven wheels or chain drives. Uh, gears, I mean, belt driven wheels or chain driven wheels work in the same direction. For example, we have this picture here. In, we have a bigger wheel. This one is working as the effort. This one is working as the load. For example, on a bicycle, this one will be the effort. The pedals are here and the load, the, the, the rear wheel is on this one here. So uh, they work in the same direction. In case this one is moving anti-clockwise, this one will also be moving anti-clockwise and the other way around. Mm -hmm. Application of the belt driven wheels or chain drives. We have the sprocket and the free wheel of a bicycle. The bigger wheel is the sprocket and, and the, the rear one is the free wheel. We have got the fan belt of a car. The fan belt of a car uses uh, a belt around it. We have got a timing chain in a car engine. In car engines, there's a small belt. There's a small chain called a timing chain. It is even in the engines of motorcycles. Uh, it is in the form of uh, chain drives. We have got conveyor belts in factories, a sewing machine. A sewing machine has the table bit and the real sewing machine. The table bit has got a large wheel and the, the sewing machine has a smaller wheel. The smaller wheel is the load while the effort is put down on the table when you are pedaling. Then we also have got escalators. With escalators, uh, you people may not be able to see what is underneath, but there are lots of belts underneath that are working around to make sure that people are moving up the escalators, up and down the escalators. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the uses, let's go into the uses of gear wheels and belt driven wheels. The uses, the first use, the first importance of gear wheels and belt cha and chain dri drives is they help in multiplying or reducing speed of rotations. They help in multiplying or reducing the speed of rotations. For example, if you are, if you are driving a car in gear one, a manual car, and you want it to run faster than you need to engage gear two, then three, then four, and so on and so forth. And in case you want to reduce the speed of the rotations, you are in gear five and you see a cow in the middle of the road, you might need to first apply a gear that is going to help to reduce on the speed of the rotations. Then the second importance, they change the direction of force. Gear wheels change now, now like these ones. If the effort is moving this way and we need it to change, we interlace them so that it can move the other way around. So gears help in changing the direction of force. Mm -hmm. Then another importance, conveyor belts in factories help in transporting products. When you go to, let's say, a soda factory, you will find, you'll find bottles um, on the conveyor belt moving from one place to another. You need to watch how it is made, how those different things are made. You will find that most of those factories use their conveyor belt system to transport products from one place to another. And maybe finally, one other importance of gears and belt drives, they help in transmitting motion from one point to another. They tra help in transmitting motion from one point to another. For example, uh, the engine of a car, how does motion move from the engine to the tires? It goes through the gear box. So it helps in, the, the gears help in transmitting motion from one point to another. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to end this by doing some few numbers. We are going to work out a few numbers here. Mm -hmm. Calculations on wheel and axle. So, we have the belt driven wheel and we have the gear wheel. We are beginning with the first question. If wheel A has 48T or 48 cogs and wheel B has 12T, how many times will wheel B turn if A rotates? Let's say once. If A rotates once and B and Roman 2 if it rotates 7 times. First of all, we need to know how many, if this one has 48 teeth and this one has 12. In case this one rotates once, how many times will this one rotate? Which is 48, the 48 teeth out of 12. 48 out of 12 times the number of times they have asked us. That is once. So uh, that is 4 times 1. It will move 4 times. 
That means when this big wheel rotates once, this one will have span around four times. How many times? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then, in case this, in case the big one spins seven times, how many will this one have span? We are using the same working. Forty-eight out of twelve times seven this time, because times once that is one round. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, by 12 once, by 12, 4. 4 times 7, it will have span 28 times. Let's go to the second one. This is a chain drive or belt drive. If wheel A, wheel X has a circumference of 50 centimeters, circumference, the distance around this circle, is 50 centimeters, and wheel Y is 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters. This time we don't have teeth to count, but they have given us some other measurements. How many rotations will 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 y will will y make will sorry will y make when x spins three times? So the bigger wheel is 50 divided by 10. 50 divided by 10 to give us one time, but they want three times times three. Mm -hmm. There we shall have 5 times 3, which gives us 15 times. So, when this one spins once, this one uh, will spin 5 times. So, if it spins thrice, this one will have span 15 times. Now, uh, Roman 2, what if this one, what if the big wheel spins 8 times? What do we do? Mm -hmm. That is 50 divided by 10 times eight times mm -hmm. so that is five five times eight which is equal to 40 times we have been looking at wheel and axle we have defined wheel and axle we have seen examples of wheel and axle we have classified wheel and axle into gear drives and uh, belt driven wheels and finally we did some calculations on wheel and axle Thank you for watching to the very end.